Hello Matrix and welcome to the second video on Calculus brought to you by the Answer Series. In this video we will be looking at limits. If I give you f of x equals x plus 1 and I ask you to determine the limit as x tends to 1 of x plus 1. Now that means as I make x closer and closer to 1, what does x plus 1 get closer and closer to? So what I've done is I've taken values of x 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.99. So I've taken values of x below 1 getting closer and closer to 1. If x is 0, x plus 1 is 1. If x is 0 0.5, I get 1.5, and so on. If I take values of x from above 1, getting closer and closer to 1, so 2, 1 1.5, 1.1, 1 1.01, .1, I get my answers. So what happens as I take x closer and closer to 1? Well, as I'm taking x closer and closer to 1 from the left and closer and closer to 1 from the right, what is my answer getting closer and closer to? Well, it's getting closer and closer to 2. So that means that as x tends to 1, in other words, as x gets closer and closer to 1, x plus 1 gets closer and closer to 2. So we talk about the limit as x tends to 1 of x plus 1 being equal to 2. The second question I ask is to write down the domain of f of x. Well, f of x is just a straight line graph. What is the domain of f of x equals x plus 1? It's just x, an element of r. In example number 2, I give you g of x equals x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. And the first thing I ask you to do is to determine the limit as x tends to 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 using a table. So again, I take values of x from the left, getting closer to 1, and values of x from the right getting closer to 1. And I substitute those values into x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Now you'll notice I cannot just make x equal to 1 in this example because I have division by 0. So this is why I have to take values of x getting closer and closer to 1. And as I get my values of x closer and closer to 1, what does my answer get closer and closer to? It gets closer and closer to 2. In other words, the limit as x tends to 1 of g of x is 2. The second question, I ask you to determine the limit algebraically. You will notice that this is difference of two squares. So I factorize it. The x minus 1 cancels, and this is exactly the same as the limit as x tends to 1 of x plus 1. And as I make x closer and closer to 1, my answer becomes 2. 2.3, I ask you to write down the domain of g of x. Well, g of x can be simplified to x plus 1. In other words, it's another linear function. So what is my domain of a linear function? It's just x an element of r. However, g of x was given in this form up here. What is x not allowed to be? x is not allowed to be 1 because I may not divide by 0. I have five examples here. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to try them yourself. Factorize them. Cancel what can cancel and then take the limit. So pause the video, try them yourself, and then we will do them together. In 3.1, I have a trinomial. 
the x minus 3 cancels. As x gets closer and closer to 3, my answer is 4. 3.2, I take out a common factor. The x cancels. As x gets closer and closer to 0, my answer is minus 1. 3.3, here's a cubic which I need to factorize. The x plus 2's cancel. As x gets closer and closer to minus 2, my answer is 9. 3.4, I have difference of 2 squares. The 2x plus 1 cancels. And as x gets closer and closer to minus a half, my answer is minus 2. 3.5, take out a common factor. The h cancels. As h gets closer to 0, my answer is minus 5. Example number 4. I have three more examples for you. Again, I want you to pause the video. I want you to try them yourself and then we will do them together. 4.1, common factor of h, which cancels with the h at the bottom. As h gets closer to 0, my answer is 3x. 4.2, common factor of h, which cancels with the h at the bottom. As h gets closer to 0, my answer is minus 4x plus 3. 4.3 is a little more complicated because I've got a fraction within this fraction. So put it over a common denominator. Simplify the brackets on the top. Leave the bracket at the bottom. Collect together like terms. Now, dividing by h is the same as multiplying by 1 over h. The h's then cancel. And if I make h closer to and closer to 0, my answer is 2 over x squared. You should now understand how to do limits. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.